Okay, this is going to be a tree LOD generation tutorial for custom trees only. I'm not talking about um, trees that come with Skyrim or anything like that, or trees that already have an atlas. LOD tree generation. I'm talking about custom trees that maybe you created a tree from scratch in Maya or Blender or ZBrush or something. You created a tree from scratch or you're importing a, a mesh that's never been seen before in Creation Kit or Skyrim. It's not there. That's what I'm talking about. So the first thing is, I assume you've already, you already set up this. Data slash LOD settings, you have to have an LOD file with the name of the world space in here. Once you have that, let's go to NIF scope to open the tree that you're gonna be working with. Now this is gonna be done for every tree. So this is basically a pipeline process. So you open the tree and this, there's a lot of reasons why I have multiple NIF scope. Uh, well, I have two different NIF scope versions and this is one of them. Now, you're going to go to uh, settings and copy my render options, which is basically just anti-aliasing off and then everything else here off. Show axis is off. Um, so you do that. So you'll kind of have this setup where like, it's almost completely blank. Open your tree a tree that you're going to be working with. Okay, set this lower. Uh, disable frontal light. Set this lower. Set this higher. So basically the idea is you want to move around these settings so that the tree doesn't look like it's lit. Once you're satisfied with the lighting configuration then you go to the tree lod executable that you downloaded. Everything is in the link in the description if I didn't say it before, including the full tutorial. So with nothing else on the screen except this, you press enter. Now what we have is Beach Palm uh, DDS or whatever you're working with. So there's another folder uh, there's another uh, program that you downloaded and we're, you're going to copy this guy here if you want to, which I do recommend, into that folder, the, vol the folder with vertex dims in it. Okay? Once you're done with that, um, here's what we do because we haven't set up the IDs text file, you, you really only have to do this once, which is why my method is more streamlined than the, the uh, conventional method of doing things, which is, okay. I don't know if creation and I assume that the reason I am seeing Pascal is because so the person who created this program is a psycho, but it doesn't matter. I knitted together a Pascal script. It's Pascal's a hideous language. Uh, so by the time that this video is released, I'm, it's probably not going to be named test. It's going to be named something else. But here's what you do. Next step. Okay, let me let me go over the steps. First step was to have the LOD settings file. Second step was to follow my NIF scope configuration thing and save that. Third step was to take a picture of the the or generate the, the text texture with the LOD Gen EXE. Now on your, you're on fourth step, you open TS5 edit, go to your package, your project file, scroll down to tree, expand that. Now you select the first tree that you see that is relevant to your LOD. And find the last tree that is relevant that you're gonna have LOD for. Um, and after that, right click, apply script. Then you're going to go through, 
where you're gonna save my script is there's a there's NTS five edit there's edit scripts you save it in there that's where it goes so you go to so so my script whatever my script's name is it's probably not gonna be named test at this point select it then press OK OK now select all this stuff copy it in there copy it in a blank text file called IDs IDS.txt OK next step is we're going to go to LOD gen here select the world space that you're working with that you want to generate LOD trees for and um, it should be there because you made an LOD file select it and press generate uh, what before I before you do that I assume that you have also not set up your uh, LOD folder so text in Skyrim data textures terrain LOD gen here's a name of your project either an ESP or ESM file it should be blank completely blank then click generate okay now every instance of this so just select from the beginning of every instance of this downward of everywhere where you see this LOD not found select that copy all of those instances add them to this text file you made take this text file that you made put it in the folder with vertex dims.exe this is a program I wrote to streamline the process for custom meshes so the second thing uh, the, after that is okay we're gonna open NIF scope we're gonna open NIF scope now you're gonna open the the um, file associated with the texture you're working with again but this time I'm using a different version of NIF scope. You can do this on the other version. It's just going to be annoying because you're going to have to switch to con the configurations over and over. But it's fine. You could do it in down too. And what you're going to do is you open my program, and you're going to click on the the mesh that has the topmost vertice, the uh, topmost vertex. See, this is the the highest reaching vertex. You select that. Now, select knee tree shape data click file offset copy this number copy this number and put it in top offset start now same thing for the bottom uh, find the bottom most uh, reaching mesh right click on knee tree shape data of that mesh file offset copy this now you're gonna go to open file in the program and open the same file the same file that you have here has to be the same one um, well could be in a different directory but it has to have the same data anyway then click extract and now you have your your data now what you're gonna do in this uh, little box you should see an uh, the name of the file and as an associated editor ID creation kit editor ID then you click uh, export now what you're gonna get out of that is two files you're gonna get beach palm or whatever you're working with the name of the tree file underscore a number uh, an ID number sl ID slash number and a text file associated with it. Now, here's the thing uh, that I didn't mention that I should have mentioned, which is that if you go to NIF scope, you go to uh, settings and you go to uh, show axes, for example, this is what you want to do to pi to streamline the process too is 
At the bottom left, you'll see either a red bar or a, yellow, a, a green bar. So if it's yeah, if it's a green bar, then you're uh, probably fine like this. Uh, you're probably fine doing nothing. If it's a red bar, you want to select use X as width here and do it. But it's not a big deal, I think. Uh, we'll see. If you if you see like texture overlaps, maybe that's you want to change that. Um, yeah, but so if if you're doing X, which I was doing, because this is how it's gonna look if you if you in game if you're gonna do it like this is gonna look like this far away bent like that, which if you you know it's fine I mean, if you want it whatever. Uh, there's no. angled uh, configuration uh, because it's just too much work for n for no reason so you get X and Y that's plenty of room for you to work with so anyway that was just an aside you don't have, you don't have to worry about that uh, if it's not relevant to you so the so look next step you've got these two files right now cut them and put them in the folder you made that is te data, textures, terrain, logen, and then the name of your project, including the extension. Put them in there. That's it. Now, uh, you're going to open logen again. Open it again. Now here's the thing, before you click generate, you have to do this, that, that whole process for each file, for each tree that you, you, you want LOD for. Now, that's much better that it automatically generates the, the geometric data for you and sets up the files for you than the, the conventional way of doing it. Uh, so that's basically a lot of time cut out. It's still manual, uh, but it's a lot more streamlined than it that was in the conventional way. My way is more streamlined. So then you click. When once you're done, because I'm uh, this is just an example. So I'm done. I'm assu I'm assuming you have way more than just one tree. So once you're ready, you click generate again. This time you have the trees in there. So you shouldn't see any warnings here about not found. Once you're done, that's it, then you can